Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mission Media tutorial, we'll be talking about how to use the histograms inside your curves that you get in DaVinci Resolve 16. This is only right now DaVinci Resolve 16 feature, so if you're beforehand, sorry you're out of luck, but here we can start to see stuff that's looking pretty good. So the first thing we'll do on this clip is just get a little primary adjustment happening. So then we'll go ahead and move on to our curves to grade, and we'll just pop this up to about where we want things to be, and add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation and we'll call that a good starting point cool so that's nice and neutral now let's go ahead and add a new node and we can start to play with some curves here now down here is our curve section which you get to by clicking by this guy and then the first little dot we have histograms on all of these different curves here so very handy but we're gonna focus on our rgb curves now what the rgb curves do if you don't know already is it takes the input luminance on the x-axis and the output luminance on the y-axis so you see if we bring our y-axis down that's going to darken our whole image since the output is on our y-axis and if we bring our x-axis in that's going to brighten the whole image because we're just going to start clipping all over the place so there we go and now we've got this histogram in the middle which represents how much of the image is in each of these parts you see in the bright parts we have some spikes for the sky and the sun we have these more mid-tones where she's at and we have these um we have these darker bits where there's the foliage and other stuff as you can see, we don't have much at pure black here, so if you want to really crunch up the image, you can bring this in some. And now if you see, if we move this curve, the image is moving around, because right now I'm viewing the output histogram, since it makes sense that there would be an input one, which would represent the image coming into the processing, and the output one, which shows the image going out of the curves. So we can change that just by going up to this guy, this little three buttons here, histograms, off, input, output. So we're on output right now off turns them off which if you're on a slower computer i'd probably recommend just because every little bit of performance you can get back is there it's a pretty negligible thing so i'm just going to leave it on we've got input so you see as we move this curve we're not moving a histogram around because our input's not moving but our output is moving and then if we go back to output now as we move things around it'll work so the way i like to use this is whenever i'm doing a grade that has you know a little bit more of a gradiness to it and we can add some more like yellow here by taking blue out but you can see that's sort of polluting our highlights and i don't want that so we can actually place a point and as we watch our blue spike we want this blue spike to match up with the red and white spike up there as you get that and now our whites look a little a lot nicer if we take that out you can see watch up in this part of the screen where the clouds are bring this back up nice now it looks a lot nicer and of course down here is a little bit too much yellow so we go ahead and tweak this around to our heart's content and you see that our adjustment that we made before is staying in place since we're pinning this part of the curve so go ahead and move blue from there so we get a little more yellowy mid-tones now we can even add it back and black balance some now if we see before and after we get this nice you know warm vintagey look and maybe that's what you're going for maybe it's not we could also go with manipulating the greens around here some so take those out a bit back up there and we could also take some out of the shadows there get a little more oops that's the reds theo that's why i wasn't doing what you were wanting so might manipulate the greens around some so take those out there get this little more magenta magenta is always nice and then get this up so balanced up there and now you can see we have changed her skin around some so now it's this sort of more vintagey warmer feel and it's also you know changed our background a little bit but it's not been a huge change to the whole image it's just sort of we've added a vibe while keeping the you know general you know what the dp intended lighting wise is still there just sort of boop now it's a little bit you know happier feeling a little more sunsetty, which is nice and then it's just up to the director who prefers maybe this more neutral one or this one with a little bit of vibe so this same concept also applies to all of our other curves so right now we're still viewing the output so we can say you know if we want to make our blues more teal we can shift those around you can see exactly where they're going which is nice or maybe you want to make them pinky purple that also works and then also same with changing around our skin tones you see we've got our nice warm stuff here i'm gonna give her a sunburn there i'm gonna give her a jaundice you move it like that 
Very excellent. That's our hue versus hue curve. And then moving on to the next one, this is our hue versus saturation. So once again, you can see if we wanted to desaturate our sky, we can make that happen because we can see exactly where our sky is. Well, before you'd have to you know, either pick there and find it and see that didn't even get our whole you know, exactly right thing. Or if you want to make it super saturated and then same with our skin over here, you get really saturated. You can make her not saturated and get this, you know, sort of tampon commercial look. Who knows? Maybe it is one. Okay, same thing, hue versus luminance. Y'all get it. Make her skin brighter here. Really easily just selectively picking that out. Bump her up some. Sort of a cool look. Always be careful with these curves, though, because it can get a little bit noisy. It could be fun to you know, darken our sky. Bring out some drama in that. I kind of like that. Getting a little bit noisy, so I'm going to go lessen this some. Um, yeah. That noise that curve is always a little noisy and then luminance versus saturation you can see this one was always a hard one to gauge so you see if we want to add some more saturation to our high mid tones so that'll probably be our lady here again so yeah bring that up bring it down works great and then here are saturation versus saturation and this one was always a hard one to eyeball because you can see it's a little bit like a an exponential thing so we have very little super highly saturated and got a lot of less saturated so we can make our less saturated even less saturated and then bring other stuff up but I don't particularly like the way that looks it works sometimes but not in this one but there you go that's a nice quick little thing all of these histograms are very useful especially this guy right here this for um, keeping your white balance and stuff intact while adding a bit of a grade helps a whole lot so anyway, I hope you liked this little tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Let me know what other features you want me to cover in DaVinci Resolve or any other sort of program that you, you like. Because, you know, we're not just DaVinci Resolve channel here. We do all sorts of stuff sometimes. Also, be sure to check out meesnewmedia.com slash products where you can get all sorts of good stuff. Light leaks, LUTs, stock footage, all sorts of things to help out motion graphics. Things that just, you know, are good to help to throw on your project when if you just don't feel like doing as much work which is great because if you do less work and get paid the same amount, then you have more time to do other stuff. But anyway, I think that wraps up this little guy. So once again, I'm at D with Meester Media. We have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.